Good day to you and welcome to 2024 Security Awareness. Today we're going to look at some real email attacks. But before we do, it's probably appropriate that we first review how email actually works in real life. Hey Tyler, you going to that all day meeting tomorrow? I'll be on vacation from Tuesday, June 27th until two days ago. Um, your auto response is still on. I'll be on vacation from Tuesday, June 27th until two days ago. Okay, everyone, I need you to send me your reports ASAP before lunch if possible. We'll do, Trip. We'll do, Trip. We'll do, Trip. We'll do, Trip. Why are you including me in this? We'll be there around seven tonight, if that's okay. Yeah, sounds good. Kind regards, Trip Crosby, Regional Sales Manager. Work 404-555-6112, extension 405. Mobile 404-555-3767. Email trip at biz dot dot. Success is always an option. John Maxwell, author. Here's that report you needed. I don't see anything. Oh. Dang it, I forgot to attach it. Hey Beth, did you see all the submissions we got today? OMG, I know! Easy on the old caps. Sorry. It's okay. Semicolon, close parenthesis. Hey son, you have to watch this video of this cat sleeping on a horse. It is so cute. Mom, I'm at work. Hi Trip. are you satisfied with Hi, I'm the administrator. I could not deliver this document. It was too big. On Monday at 10.37 a.m., Paul wrote, Hi Trip. this is the latest version of the document you were looking for. Hope it's not too late. Paul. Yeah, I know what I wrote. Hi, I'm really looking forward to seeing you guys tonight. Oh yeah, circular disclosure. The information transmitted just now is intended only for the person or entity to which it is addressed, and it may contain confidential and or privileged material. Any review, retransmission. I don't know what that means. Inbox full. So true, and unfortunately, email can also be used for nefarious purposes, and we see this every day. In fact, it can be a transmitter of a number of really bad computer diseases, shall we say, that can make our lives quite miserable. The biggest threat that we and other organizations face continues to be ransomware. It's also a big threat to your home computer as well. Here's an introduction to ransomware and the threat it poses. This Certainly you've seen the headlines. Tonight. We begin tonight with the growing concern across this country after that massive cyber attack. The effects of the Russia-based ransomware attack are being felt up and down the East Coast. We are learning the company paid the hackers millions in ransom. Colonial Pipeline, the victim of a devastating ransomware attack. Its effects passed down to the consumer through gas shortages and panic buying. But how did we get here? First, you have to understand what ransomware is. Ransomware is the deployment of malware, malicious software, into a corporate environment that encrypts all of the data. Hackers will then only decrypt that data if the original owner pays up, often through cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin. It's a digital ransom. It's exactly what it is. According to the National Cyber Investigative Joint Task Force, there are three common ways these ransomware attacks happen. Phishing campaigns like emails with malware and a suspicious link. Remote desktop protocol vulnerabilities, where hackers gain access to a computer or network over the internet. And software vulnerabilities, where hackers use security weaknesses in widely used software to access people's data. Many of these attacks come from organized crime groups that operate out of Russia, as well as North Korea, China, and Iran. Cities have also fallen victim, including New Orleans. It got hit with a ransomware attack in December of 2019. A city employee opened the wrong email at work. A phishing attack. It's devastating. Kimberly LeGrew is the city's chief information officer. The city opted to rebuild its system instead of pay up. LeGrew says New Orleans spent about $1.5 million recovering that data from old hard copy records and another $5.2 million rehabbing their digital infrastructure. This is almost like hurricane. Uh, you, you get prepared uh, because you see the bad weather coming. Indeed, ransomware is a big threat to local governments as well. Here's what happened recently to the city of Oakland. How was the city of Oakland hacked? 
Experts say it was most likely a phishing email that led to compromising their data. Oakland's reputation is getting smeared again by an uninvited ransomware hacking of its computer systems, this time even at police headquarters. At Oakland Police Headquarters, there was bad news even before visitors walked in. Ransomware hacked computers have ground Oakland City government to a near halt. People lined up in the police headquarters lobby to file reports, working with clerks severely handicapped by non-functioning computers essential to their work. Anything that got done was done by hand. Any payments made were made in cash, no credit cards or checks. There's a lot going on. It's a messy in many ways in Oakland. The ransomware attack in that city has taken a new twist. Yeah, weeks after hackers managed to take over several city systems, they've started posting employees' personal information online. Here's NBC Bay Area's Valina Jones. It's perhaps one of the greatest challenges I've seen for the city. Nearly a month after hackers essentially froze all city online services, the city of Oakland is now dealing with a data breach impacting city employees and businesses. While services like 311 are back, the city is issuing extensions for things like business taxes until April 17th because the city's website is still down. Our personal information, um, our name, our address, our driver's license number, our social security number, those are very alarming concerns. Council member Treva Reed and all four members of her staff receive this letter over the weekend, notifying them that their personal information may have been compromised. Reed says small business owners have also received the same notice, but don't know the extent of the information share. It certainly is one of those things that you personally feel alarmed, not knowing what information, who has that information. Yes. Not only is our constituent information at risk in this kind of attack, but our personal information as well. So what can we do to prevent both ourselves and our organizations from becoming ransomware victims? Of the three ransomware delivery mechanisms they showed us in the earlier video, the one we are most concerned about is a phishing attack. You and I could accidentally click on a bad email and surrender our credentials, or download an exploit, infect our computers, our department's computers, and even computers all over our organization. So how do we prevent this from happening? Obviously, we can start by being very careful about what we do with emails that are sent to us. However, because attackers are getting better and better in their phishing attempts, this does take practice in order to get better and better at identifying what is legit and what is evil. Let's look at some examples of emails together and determine whether or not they are legitimate. Examine this first email closely. If we hover our mouse over the change password button, but we don't click it, we would see this URL, this destination that the link would take us to. Remember that the destination is between the first two forward slashes and the very next forward slash. This is the site it would take us to. Is this email legitimate or is it a fish? When you are ready, click continue to view this email again and provide your answer. 